first up we're going to drain the coolant and I've done this by cracking the bottom radiator hose and just letting it drain down that way you don't get it everywhere all over the floor next you'll remove the radiator hose from the radiator and leave the other end connected to the engine side as you won't need to remove that off just uh, loosen the clamps and uh, twist it around just to move it out of the way next you'll remove the radiator shower bolts from the top of the radiator there is one here and one over here which I've already removed so you remove them and then we will need to undo the bolts down here off the back of the fan clutch which is a uh, 12 mil bolts as well I believe all right the next step here would be to remove the 12 mil nuts from the water pump which holds the fan clutch on after that step we're going to slide the fan clutch and blade forward and lift the shroud and fan clutch out at the same time that will then give us access to the front of the engine so once the uh, battery heat shields are out you'll now see that the fan shroud will fall back and be easy to remove so now is the time to slide the fan forward and lift the shroud and the fan out at the same time without damaging the heat the radiator core all right once that's out you are left with this and the next thing will be is to loosen off your aircon um, bottom bolt and then your tensioner and remove the ac belts to get the pulley off for the water pump which is sitting back here all right, so next is to remove the air con tensioner bracket assembly and pulley. So that'll just be a couple of bolts here and here, and they should come off pretty straightforward. Uh, not difficult, I'll get it in there with a spanner. And uh, then we'll go on to the next part. Once the air con idler bracket and the alternator bracket is off, which will then give you access to the water pump down here. Same time to take the timing cover off, and this is done by undoing these clips and a few bolts around the outside kind of hard to see this time of the day uh, but yeah we'll get to it and I'll show you when I'm done you'll also need to remove the power steering reservoir and as the hose is in the way so it's one bolt there and a couple of bolts on the side so we'll undo that and bring that forward and then the cover will come off but once that's loosened and out the way that will allow you to get the cover off and then we just need to align our timing mark so this mark should be aligned with this mark up here and there will be a mark down here on the injector pump that will line up with a mark down there too. Following removing the tensioner and alternator brackets, you'll then need to take off the tensioner for the timing belt. And to do that, you need to remove the spring. Then you can unbolt the tensioner. You unbolt this bolt first. Then you undo the hex bolt there. And then the belt will come off. Prior to removing the belt, you want to line up your timing marks. So we have one here. I just marked it with a sharpie, just to make it a bit darker. And we can get down in here. There's this one down here as well. So line up those timing marks. Then remove your belt. You need to whack a screwdriver in here. I've gone off of this side. And with an impact gun and a 19 mil impact socket, you will then lock it in place so it doesn't move. And back the bolt out now if the bolt does come um, doesn't want to come out and it rotates backwards just make sure you rotate it backwards and then rotate it forwards again to line the mark up prior to putting it all back together um, that way you're taking up any slack in the valve train and you won't make any mistakes and cause any engine damage now with a uh, dead blow hammer so you don't do any damage and a pry bar slightly pry behind here being careful not to crack the rear cover and pop the cam pulley loose there is a wood roof key under here and um, you do not want to lose that so slightly pop that off <laughs> and the wood roof key came with it so be careful not to lose that because you will need it next on this job is under the four bolts it's one here one here one here and one here then you'll slowly pry this back cover off and not break it and uh, this is aluminium so be very careful with it once that's off then we can get to the water pump bolt down there once that covers off it's now time to access the water pump bolts so they're all around the outside here as you can see there is one down underneath there 
which might be a little bit tricky to get to and there is also another one down underneath on this side here so take your time with it um don't shear anything and we're almost halfway there while i've already done this uh, you need to replace the seal right here so this is the old one put the new one in use the seal puller to pull that out so you just lever on it and then you use the seal installer to hammer the new one in. Make sure it's the correct size and covers the uh, correct face of the seal. And the sound will change once you hammer it in. Pretty easy. Next up is to undo all the water pump bolts and then the water pump will come out and we'll be able to fit the new one in. And uh, happy days, we can start reassembling again. I'll check it out once it's out and see where it was actually failing. All right, water pumps out. There is a metal gasket that goes on the water pump. So make sure you remove that. And this is as uh, simple as that. Undo all those bolts there. Pop her out. Um, looks pretty good down there. There was obviously water in this vehicle prior to when I got it. So that's probably why the water pump failed. And I'll just show you now the uh, failure on the water pump. The water pump failed through the inspection hole here. So the water pump sits around that way. And yeah, it's just leaking out the bottom there. So. Out of there was where the water was coming from. Can't really see it. Obviously, it's a sealed unit. So, yeah, time to uh, get the new one in, and off we go. So, new water pump to go on here. It's the Azen branded one, which is genuine Toyota. Looks like they've just taken the Toyota logo off and put their own on there, which is fine. I'm just going to throw this on and uh, put the bolts back in, and off we go. All right, the water pump is on. Now we just need to fit the aircon idler bracket and the alternator bracket up in here before we can tension those two bolts there. And they'll be back on to resealing the uh, rear timing cover and putting that on. Next, run your sealant on the groove that's in there and also into the corners here where the rocket cover gasket sits. And along this bottom edge here, which I'm yet to do, once that's all done, uh, then it's for those four bolts and refit. Next up is to refit the cam gear, making sure you do not lose the woodruff key, which I've fitted inside here. So you put that on first, then slide the cam gear on, then put the bolt in, then tighten it up to 72 newton meters of torque. And if it does move, which it probably will, make sure you rotate the engine cam backwards and then rotate it forwards to line up your timing marks again. All right, cam gear is on and it's all torqued up to spec. It did move, so I realigned it up here, timing mark. Next up, put the timing belt on. Make sure it is tight on this side so you can get the tension on on this side. If you uh, can't get it on the teeth, then you haven't lined up your pulleys correctly and you may need to just slightly tap it forward or backwards. Uh, to be in the same spot as what your injector pump is down here and then it will go on no worries the tension that comes with new bolts so you just need to unwind them or pull that off I haven't decided how that comes out yet and then fit the tensioner to the engine time belt tension is on these two bolts come with it springs on which is a real pain in the backside a small screwdriver and if you lever it off this rib just here, and you come to it from this side of the vehicle, you can get that on fairly quickly. Now, it took me a few tries to get on there, but all on now, and now for the timing cover. And next up is to put the timing cover on. So all the clips, one, two, three, there's one down here, four. And then you got the uh, three bolts underneath, which is one, two, and there's one back down here, three. Uh, bolt them on and we are getting somewhere Next is to fit the aircon either assembly and the pulley back onto the bracket If you're replacing the fan clutch now would be the time to do it And as it is for 10 mil nuts around the outside and that will separate from the fan itself And on the left there is the old one and on the right is a new one as you can see the new one is an Asian random one this, I don't even think this is the genuine one, as far as I can tell. It might be. I have to have a closer look. 
Yeah, we're just going to bolt that on to the fan and then we know we have a good working clutch fan. Next is to drop the fan and shroud in place, making sure not to damage your fins too much on your radiator. And the uh, shroud has to clip in down the bottom here. And yeah, just slide the fan on as so, um, put the bolts in. And then you're on to the next stage of putting your battery boxes back in. Next, fit the alternator belts and tighten the fan clutch bolts to the pulley down in here. And then it's on to the aircon belt. Next thing to do is to fit the battery boxes slash heat shields. It's the passenger side main battery on here. And if we go over to this side, this is the auxiliary battery one. Once they're all bolted in, it's a matter of putting your batteries in, filling up with coolant, and then starting it up and make sure it all runs. All right, she's up and running. Sounds perfect. Not a problem. And there you go, guys. Not that hard to do this yourself. Quite simple. If you're uh, having any questions, let me know.